So we are out enjoying the sun here. Believe it or not, this is uh, December in Michigan. Uh, today is the 9th, 8th or the 9th, 8th I believe it is. And unseasonably warm weather for Michigan. But what's one thing that's good about this is we are going towards the end of the uh, deer season. The uh, This week will pretty much end the uh, second rut phases and uh, we're, we're focused on late season hunting. And one of the things I want to talk about today is because of the warm temps and, and everybody kind of starts to when uh, when temperatures are like this in, in the late season and uh, kind of takes the shine a little bit off from the um, uh, that you know ever so popular hunting in the snow late season uh, that everybody loves to do um, we start gauging our our thought process towards um, uh, habitat improvements gauging ourselves uh, thinking about what needs to be done looking back at the season in uh, review um, and hopefully you're you're collecting all that information um, and making a, a plan or a strategy of how to better um, the fall this year going into the 2021 season as of next hunting season and one of the things that I always like to um, chat about to folks and uh, clients this time of the year is it's a step that I feel is probably one of the biggest overlooked steps um, that you can possibly do on your farm and you know I have some folks tell me it's not technically habitat improvement anything that advances your herd, herd um, health or um, productivity wise to me is a habitat improvement and if uh, if there's one thing that I can uh, help help folks with is just today I've got these uh, laying here I'm cleaning out the truck and I've collected um, you know a couple here in the truck because I've transferred a couple out there was some old sticks that I had uh, some old sticks that I had on uh, a, a farm that um, you know some folks uh, trespassers actually came in on me this year and I got pictures of them grabbing a hold of my licking branch and um, it was a spot that I transi transitioned out of anyway and don't didn't plan on late season hunting it. So I took them down and that's the reason that they're in the back of my truck here. Um, so these ones obviously here now that you know your hands have been all over them they're out of commission. But this to me guys is one of the, the best um, tools that I can promote and teach to uh, habitat improve. Now does it help feed your deer? No it doesn't. Uh, it's a it's a it's a connection to, to improve that uh, point of impact that I truly believe that there's nothing else as important, as cheap as this inventory stick that I'm holding here right now. Um, so where does that tie into late season and habitat improvement? What I want to, uh, you know, um, recommend or encourage everybody to do this season, especially right now, like we were talking, you know, the warmer temps, is to be able to get out where you're not, you know, freezing, but you can still see the um, the patterns of things that had happened during the fall. So when you go into next year, into the into the fall, your uh, one of the biggest mistakes is a lot of folks hang their um, their uh, fall hunting setups on summer patterns. Now, if you do your if you do your play your cards right and you do your um, investigating of your stands, your postseason scouting. Obviously, that is fall movement that you are uh, gaining that knowledge on. And that's where these uh, tying these inventory sticks or these looking branches in to that uh, game plan is key. Um, like we've always talked in the past, guys, is three quarters of an inch. Uh, I cut them. Um, this one here is about four, about four and a half foot long. So depending on what tree that you hook it to, like I said, if you're in an area um, that you, uh, you know, you do get a snow load, I don't recommend tying them to pine trees unless you've cut. So what I'll do is if you have to put it in a pine that's over hanging them directly in the trail, um, if you put them, put them on a pine, you know, tie them to a pine or suspend them, what I do is I hang them on the, the branch itself. Uh, you know, I tie the rope around. We're going to talk about a strategy here that I like to do better than not. not. Uh, but, you, you know, you tie the rope around it and you suspend them uh, from the limb. But what happens is, is that limb that carries on, on a on a pine collect so much snow that it forces that limb down next thing you know you're sticking everything goes down with it and now it's in the dirt or uh, close to it and yes I oh, got some video here I'll show you they still use it when that happens um, but it's not a um, it's not as sought after and then you start getting other scents on it from other critters chewing on it whatever the case is hopefully the snow doesn't last too long and it rebounds back up 
but just watch that. So what I do is I, I tie that to it, suspend it, and then right after the pine branch, I'll cut the pine branch out. So I take the bow out of it. So it's just, it's more sturdy that way. And you don't have that, uh, that crushing uh, effect. So keep that in mind if you're in a conifer area where you need to hang that above the trail. Um, but as far as the stick itself, all kinds of different ways to tie them. The uh, here, this one here, you'll see is I actually got, I put a um, a drywall screw, a three or three and a half inch uh, screw in the end of it. And, you know, I'll bring that up there so you can see it. And then what I actually did is I just wrapped it around um, so that, you know, the object is, is to not let your rope slide off. So, you know, this is one that I did, you know, a few years back. I just, you know, put that in there and then I tied that around it. What I like to do, guys, the best way I like to do that is to, um, is, and there's a reason here, is, you know, I, I, you know, these are, like I said, you know, three quarters of an inch um, to an inch, three quarters. And uh, then at the end of them right here, as I actually put a hole in, like a quarter inch hole with a drill, I put a hole, you know, right about two inches down from the end. And you know, poke that hole in there, and then I I run the the uh, that paracord, that heavy duty paracord, that I use the army surplus paracord. But you put it through there, and then you actually loop it back, and you tie it up here. So when that that suspends, it's got all this motion um, below it that goes every way. If you tie it off to it, sometimes, especially if you tie it here, and then it ties right to the limb, you take you kind of restrict that motion, and uh, then you'll end up, you know, when it dries out, uh, breaking it or whatever. The object is is to let that swing just as free as you can swing. So by putting the hole right directly in the end of it, you know, putting the putting the the wire or the um, sometimes I put a wire through and made a loop, and then tied the tied the rope to the wire. You can do that, or if the hole's big enough that you know you can poke that string through there, that paracord through, then tie it back up, and then it gets that 360 degree, um, you know, vertical swing to it. And the reason that we hang those guys is, is that has to be your focus of attention. Why are we putting it out there this time of the year? While you are scouting, you are creating uh, and knowing where you're going to be. You're looking at those early season stands. You're going internal further, hanging those rut stands. Uh, you're creating a line of travel. And if you can get that established now in the late season, um, you know, going into, you can actually hang it and be able to hunt it maybe late season to see how they... Uh, how they react. The biggest thing is, is you're, you're hanging these inventory sticks on the line of travels that are more predominant this time of the year, or you can see them more predominant. And what that is, is like I said, that, that tells you that you are on fall movement. Um, time and time again, I go, you know, I start my client properties here in December, um, you know, focused uh, January because of the weather all over the country and um, weather dependent. And what I see is when we find these folks that are using these and taking my advice or anybody out there's advice, it's a big thing in the industry right now, but taking that advice and hanging these, uh, what I see is they're on summer patterns. They're on the food, they're on the edge of food plots. They're on the edge of fields. They're on two tracks that are suspended out in the middle of nowhere with no side cover, no security cover around them. And this is the first step going into that. So if you're out and you're looking for for something to do going in you know something to do going into the the uh the habitat season here is to collect a bunch of these now i've got these are willow whips they're cottonwood or uh, eastern willow or i call them cottonwood willow whips um that uh, i use and they're all around my pond and anything you can see here guys that's that'll be the end that we you know hang from but the this will be the the end that the the you know the the critters are on but you can see the bark is is rough and that's the that's the um, the kind of uh, material that I like to use, uh, something that has a tight bark, uh, like a white oak or or something that they can leave a lot of rough. It's rough, but it's tight as well. It's not going to slip off. Um, this cottonwood, you would really have to peel the bark off from it. That's why I like using it, uh, and it's dense. Uh, the vines, sometimes you'll see the vine is, is they, the deer love vine scrapes, but the problem with vine is is it's soft and they'll chew it. And before you know it, um, it doesn't take much to break it. It doesn't take, it's, it's pretty flexible, I don't say about fragile as far as breaking it, but they will uh, chew it and it's short. These here, guys, I've got some of these that are on my farms that are three or four years old. And obviously they never get touched um, by my, myself or any humans. Scent on them. And it's just a, it's a collection of scent. And like we've said in the, the past, is they get way more inventory off from that. They get more in, information excuse me, uh, information, our inventory, their information, off this scrape or this uh, stick 
than they do at the ground level. Uh, you know, them scrapes going through all the year here, all the videos, I've got a dozen trail cameras, all the videos. I've probably got a dozen maybe that the, you know, the, the bucks um, of any age class are actually working the scrape. And that's a, that's a scent station. It's not an information um, deal for them. So any time that you can take and start creating that now and at, at that head level, like we always talk, not, you know, six foot in the air at, uh, you know, I'm six foot, but, uh, you know, belt level. So you've got it that three and a half foot, four foot off the ground. Um, that's where you that's where you need that that uh, you know that uh, level. So run with that three foot mark, and you'll be safe. That way, all the deer are using it. Not it's not just a mature buck looking branch that uh, can get broke. This is at the end of the day, guys. This is the first piece of the puzzle that you need to find. You need to either cut them the day that you are. Uh, going into the woods, something on your property that they love. If you've got shumac, if you've got, um, you know, vine, whatever that case is, find something that they love rubbing outside of a pine. I don't recommend using pine because it takes uh, so much out of the scent of their, uh, you know, preorbital glands that they use. Um, that scent or that uh, sap takes away from the smell. They don't communicate with it as well. Will they use it? Yes, but they don't. Uh, they don't uh, get as much out of it. Um, and I've seen them, uh, you know, not not spend as much time as they uh, they do with these, as these hardwood sticks. Um, so, cut a bunch of these on your property. Uh, cut a bunch, save them. Do not put them in a garage where there's gas smell, or they're in your hands, or the kids are moving them around, or the kids are using them as baseball bats, or whatever the case is. Uh, collect them, find them, uh, keep your keep your um, you know scent off from them. Take them in, in with you if you know you're going to hang two or three sets that day, cut two or three of them. Um, or if you're just going to find two or three sets and then you can hang your stand on them. Biggest thing is, is when you hang these guys, make sure that you can put a stand on them. Don't just hang them randomly throughout the woods. They have to have two pieces. There's three pieces of the puzzle when you're doing these mock scrapes. One is the scrape itself. Two is the camera. And the third and most, you know, obviously most important is your, your ability uh, out of a tree stand to hang a tree stand on it so don't just place them randomly place them and you're tr you're trying to promote and create that line of movement and like i said that's why it's ever so important to get that you know that's one piece of the puzzle that's uh that everyone can do is getting those in the woods now and especially when we're uh we're, where we're dealing with some warm temps like this uh good time to take the kids with you uh, start taking walks if you're in any of the the uh, states tuning in that you're lower um uh, south of michigan um, and you know southern part of Michigan where uh, you can get out and you don't have to battle the elements of the snow that we've got coming our way here or it doesn't last very long um, get out but this is probably the first and the most important piece of a habitat puzzle that I can that I can uh, help help you uh, focus on is just this uh, piece of this cheap it, it doesn't get any cheaper than this um, it's a it's a uh, piece of the puzzle guys that can't be overlooked um, it's a very important tool, and I think once you get them, like I said, if you use the right product, um, yes, uh, you, you may have to take them and move them, you know, uh, throughout. If you're moving a stand location, if the stand just doesn't work and you know that your, your habitat has changed and your browse level is a little bit higher somewhere else, um, they will, uh, you know, you move them with you, but you use the same stick. Once they're on the farm, don't eliminate them unless something like this this one right here where you have somebody go in and they grab a hold of it and uh, you're doing some habitat improvement on that that farm this year is going to get a lot of work done to it. So I've yeah, elected to pull it out. Um, but that's uh, other than that, leave them there and tweak them per stand, stand location if need be. And if it's a stand location that's a high performer and you don't have to move them, uh, the stands, Leave it there, and uh, those those uh, scrapes are now just like I said, promoting that line of travel. Huge piece of the puzzle, guys. Start your habitat season out with this. I think it's a uh, it's a it's a tech tip here, if you will, or or a strategy, or whatever you want to label it. But it's probably the smartest uh, move and the cheapest investment you can do on your property this year. Thanks, guys.